so there is a generator to this generator i'm giving some mechanical power input pm when i'm giving mechanical power input pm because it is a generator you will get some electrical power output pe understood so let us say i am initially operating this particular trans uh, this generator with some electrical load and uh, the delta corresponding to that load is some delta naught so delta naught is the initial load angle because as i already told you delta corresponds to load applied on the particular generator or particular synchronous machine now the power corresponding the power output corresponding to this delta is something given here i am calling this p naught initial power output corresponding to delta naught now let us say i am increasing my load if i am increasing my load what happens to my delta delta also rises let us say corresponding to the new load my increased delta is somewhere over here say this is delta 1 delta 1 is the delta 1 corresponding to the new load now tell me what is the power output delivered by the generator corresponding to this new load power output is something p1 understood something is p1 suppose now i got more entertainment or i'm getting more encouragement i want to further increase the load i want to further load this particular machine by increasing the load so i am increasing the load and uh, corresponding to the new increased load let us say my delta is delta 2 new delta 2 okay now what is my new power output corresponding to this new delta somewhere p2 now you see when the load was something delta 1 then the power output was p1 if i further increase the load i have further increased the load from delta 1 to delta 2 should the power output increase but what happened power output has been decreased why because you have increased the load beyond 90 degrees if you were increasing the load up to 90 degrees as the load is increasing power output is also increasing if your load is increasing and the generator is also delivering amount the required amount of power then it is called as a stable operating zone now if you are further increasing the load but the generator is no more increasing the power output it is decreasing the power output that means the generator has entered into unstable zone of operation therefore from this particular power angle curve i can say what is the maximum amount of load that i can apply on a particular generator before it is driven into unstable state or i can say loss of synchronism just like this you know let us say you are a person you are capable of lifting 50 kgs let us say maximum i'm giving you 10 kgs of bag you are you're lifting 30 40 50 so at 50 you are at verge of stability okay you are hardly you know you can lift it what if i am putting a 50 more kgs on you that means 100 and uh, 100 kgs i'm putting 100 kgs on you so as you are uh, lifting 50 i'm putting more 100 then you will your energy in your body no more no is increasing to lift the remaining 50 you will ultimately break down that means you can't even lift the 50 that you can you are actually lifting that means you are driven into unstable or your loss of synchronism is taken place understood so this region up to delta is equal to 90 degrees is called a stable zone of operation understood in power angle curve this region up to 90 degrees is called as stable operating zone and if load is increased so much that delta goes beyond 90 degrees this is called as unstable operating zone now you tell me what is the basic mathematical characteristic that you can observe in stable zone in stable zone as the load is increasing even the delta is also increasing that means dp by dd d delta that means change in load per change in delta is greater than zero or i can say it is positive isn't it as the power angle curve you see the power the power curve is how it is having a positive slope with respect to delta isn't it if it is having positive curve means as delta increases power also output increasing so this condition is called as stable condition so this is the called as steady state stability conditions okay steady state stability condition please note down this is the steady state stability condition that we are finding now okay this is a steady state stability condition so steady state stability condition says that if dp by d delta is greater than zero then the machine is stable now you look at the unstable zone the p is decreasing the curve is in a decreasing fashion that means the slope is negative that means dp by d delta okay is less than zero that means it is negative then it is said 
unstable region this condition is called as unstable condition okay unstable condition now you see dp by d delta means you can differentiate the power equation with respect to delta let me do that also so if i differentiate this power equation with respect to delta what is the condition what is going to happen see p is equal to ev by x sin delta or i can say p max sin delta if i do dp by d delta dp by d delta will be equal to same p max into cos delta okay this particular factor or this particular term is called as synchronizing coefficient synchronizing coefficient or or it's also called as stiffness factor of this generator stiff stiffness factor it is also called as stiffness factor so what does this stiffness factor indicates it indicates that how much margin is available now if i want to draw the synchronous coefficient uh, curve okay it is cos curve that means it will be as given over here isn't it it looks like this what does it say see when you are operating at delta this stiffness coefficient is high that means it is saying that there is a lot of power that you can transfer before the machine is driven into instability as you keep on increasing your load you see stiffness coefficient is decreasing the, that means the stiffness of the system is decreasing that means it is approaching towards instability now when the the load has increased up to 90 degrees let us say what is the stiffness available in the system or it also specifies how much more the load or how much more load the system can take before it is driven into instability so as long as your stiffness coefficient is also positive you have no problem understood so basically when you are doing this kind of action when you are trying to change the or increase the load on the power system okay on this particular generator the generator will be subjected to some oscillation the rotor of the generator is subjected to oscillations before it is okay before it is settling to that new load this phenomena only called as hunting we have already studied about hunting under hunting what happens whenever sudden load changes takes place in an alternator basically it is subjected to hunting in hunting we have already seen that rotor will be oscillating so it is very important to know what is that frequency of oscillation frequency of oscillation is given by okay frequency of oscillation due to hunting is given by natural frequency of oscillation is given by under root okay p cos delta p max pm cos delta which is nothing but mm -hmm. stiffness coefficient divided by moment of inertia of the particular generator so in the next video we will discuss about what is this m moment of inertia but now you can remember what is the okay frequency of oscillation or frequency of hunting whenever the load on the system is changing or on the generator is changing it is stiffness coefficient divided by moment of inertia under root in hertz okay the unit is hertz so this is the steady state stability condition with respect to power angle curve any anyhow we will next study about swing equation also because this swing equation helps you in finding out the steady state stability for okay uh, it it hel helps to evaluate the steady state stability as well as it also helps you to transient state stability also using swing equation you can also use it for transient state stability also that is the utility of swing equation and finally using swing equation also we will come across this condition what is that condition steady state stability condition that dp by d delta should be greater than 0 or for the system to be stable this is the condition so the same condition we are obtaining by using a power angle curve or swing equation so whenever asked in the exam this is nothing but the condition for steady state stability and what is the maximum power that can be transferred before the stability is loose that is p max only no if you are going to transfer any power beyond this p max there is no more increase in the power there is decrease in the power so this p max is also called as steady state stability okay limit this is also called as steady state stability limit of power okay steady state stability limit means the maximum power that can be transferred without losing the stability in the power system so in general in practically this steady state stability limit will be equal to surge impedance loading surge impedance loading of the power system i hope you know anything about surge impedance loading if not anyhow we will be discussing in our course regarding surge impedance loading so generally it is will be equal to sil steady state stability limit will be equal to sil surge impedance loading practically okay now this is about 
पावर एंगल कर नेक्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट स्विंग इक्वेशन एंड इन सब्सिक्वेंट वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ट्रांजेंट स्टेट स्टेबिलिटी ऑल्सो बिकॉज दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ क्रैश कोर्स आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल बट आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू द बेस्ट आइडिया पॉसिबल और द बेस्ट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज पॉसिबल इन शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम विच विल हेल्प यू हंड्रेड परसेंट इन क्लियरिंग यूर पी एस यू एग्जामिनेशन बिकॉज अवर क्रैश कोर मेनली इंटेंडेड फॉर पी एस यू एग्जामिनेशन बट this concept okay for this concept you require even more depth understanding when appearing for ies or gate examinations so but anyhow whatever the topics that we are discussing will act as a good introduction or i can say primer for you to go deep so you can by self study also you can go deep into the numericals if you are preparing for gate exam also anyhow this course can be used in the two ways okay thank you for watching this video